How is it going everybody? This is Joey here at Underage Packers. Today I wanted to do a quick video, a quick shout out, if you will, a quick appreciation for the Green Bay Packers secondary and how they are playing right now in the 2021 season. It is absolutely remarkable considering the circumstances they are in, the opponents they faced, uh, everything about this group is really they're performing really well, much better than you would expect on paper with the amount of talent they have. So, you know, let's take a, a little step back here. I'm not even going to try to tell you that, well, uh, Eric Stokes is playing really well in the slot or whatever, or they should move Shannon Sullivan over here and they'd be even better. But, you know, the whole entire point of this video is just to show some love and hopefully light out um, kind of how good. The Packers defense as a whole have been playing, but a focus on the Packers secondary, including their two star safeties, Darnell Savage and Adrian Amos. So stats are for losers, but I did want to throw just one stat at you today, and that is that Green Bay, the Green Bay Packers secondary, is currently third in the league for passer rating allowed on average, so only an average of 82.4 of passer rating allowed from opposing quarterbacks. The only two teams in front of them are two AFC East teams with the New England Patriots with 75.7 and Buffalo with uh, quite the lead at 60.7. So, you know, the Packers, that number is pretty incredible to look at considering how poor the Packers secondaries have been over the past few years. They've put out some bad groups, some straight out bad groups there at cornerback and safety. And safety, especially in 2018 or 19, was it, where you had Tremont Williams being brought back and being converted to playing safety. That was a bad time. That was a bad safety era for the Green Bay Packers. But now you fast forward to 2021 where the Packers signed Adrian Amos and then uh, draft Darnell Savage with the 21st overall pick two off seasons apart. We have quite a difference now. Last year down the stretch, Adrian Amos and Darnell Savage were key to the Packers defense playing much better in the second half of the season down the stretch, and now it looks like they're getting hot again. Uh, Adrian Amos almost had two or three interceptions uh, against this game in this uh, in the Seahawks game, but dropped two of them near the very end on that last drive. And Darnell Savage is, you know, playing some great pass coverage. I still think in Joe Barry's defense, he can be used in a lot of different ways, closer to the line of scrimmage. But Darnell Savage, Adrian Amos, doing a really good job on the back end for the secondary. Okay, now let's switch things over to the cornerbacks. Not only have guys that have maybe not played bad, but have played less than ideal, less than uh, top cornerback status in the past one or two years, Kevin Keene and Shannon Sullivan, not only have those guys stepped up and played greater than they ever had, but you also have new guys like Rasul Douglas and Eric Stokes instantly assimilating it into this Packers secondary unexpectedly getting these really upper opportunities that they did not expect to be tasked for a few months ago in September at the start of the season. Eric Stokes, I'm sure, was expecting to have some role on the Packers' defense, eventually get uh, solidify his role, uh, but he knew he was going to have Kevin Keene and Jair Alexander uh, ahead of him for most of the season. Kevin Keene maybe thought he had a chance to knock out. I don't know how things were looking in training camp, uh, but he, I'm sure he did not expect by week six be, to be the Packers' number one corner and have to take on DeAndre Hopkins in just a few weeks and Jamar Chase and then Rasul Douglas, who was on the Cardinals practice squad just a few weeks ago. The Packers were looking for some cornerbacks to help with Kevin Keene initially out. They signed Dunbar Douglas, and initially a lot of fans were more familiar with the name Quinton Dunbar, but now very quickly over these last few weeks over the course of this month, they have become very familiar with the name Rasul Douglas, his claim to fame being his game-winning interception to end it off, walk-off interception against the team 
that said he wasn't good enough to be on the roster. He was only good for a practice squad position in the Arizona Cardinals. And now here he is, playing great, excellent football, lockdown coverage every week, man. He, you know, you look at what Eric Stokes and uh, Russell Douglas did last week against Seattle, shutting out Russell Wilson with uh, and limiting his t- top two targets, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, to a combined maybe six or seven receptions. That's insane. And, you know, a, a ton of credit to Joe Barry at this point. Also, kind of a aforementioned shout-out to Shannon Sullivan. Really great dude. Doesn't get a lot of credit. He doesn't see the field as much as the two boundary corners. But, you know, he's, he's playing some pretty good football compared to the rest of his career. So, and I think a lot of the secondary success comes down to you know, all of the defense is connected into one unit, and yeah, I, I don't know if it's a famous saying or what, but it's a very popular idea that one group of the defense cannot succeed uh, without another succeeding and doing well and setting up well for them. And it really all starts on the defensive line gaining pressure because if they can do that, that's that sets up the cornerbacks. They, the quarterback has less time to make a decision, uh, and then the linebacker as well in that same idea. Uh, especially in the run game. And, you know, the defensive line, the pass rush, they just got 32 pressures against Seattle this past week. That's a pretty crazy number. Rashawn Gary has been playing really well. Preston Smith as well, much improved boost from his 2020 self. Uh, and, and then Devondre Campbell, I think, though, is what really helps out this Pack- Packers secondary, specifically him controlling things over the middle, can, being able to cover tight ends and running backs, uh, you know, letting the secondary ha- handle the rest of the wide receivers. It's been really phenomenal. And uh, just being something that distracts the quarterback, some someone the, uh, the quarterback has to keep an eye on. Uh, it's been really great to see Devondre Campbell and this whole defense playing as one, playing as a unit, which is something you could say they really did not have the past two years with Mike Pettin. And now it really feels with the leadership of the energetic Joe Barry that this defense is playing as one group, which is really, really exciting to see after a decade of pitiful defense in Green Bay. Pitiful might be exaggerating a little bit, but it wasn't good. It wasn't good. We'll at least go with that. That's that's a little bit of an understatement there. But um, I'm really excited what the Green Bay Packers have been doing on defense this season. Hopefully it continues. I'm really glad to see the fans uh, claiming on to them on how great they've been playing and also for them to finally be getting national media attention just because it's showing up in the stats now. You know, now the media's like, oh, okay, you know, we we don't do that much research on any teams outside of the Dallas Cowboys or the, the New York Giants. So, you know, we'll, we'll delve in to the Green Bay Packers, you know. I'm getting a little too much small market truth, uh, truther right now but you know anyway anyways though back to the main central point Packers secondary playing great you love to see it that's all I have for today let me know your thoughts on the Packers secondary and the defense's play as a whole so far this year in the comments down below greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe follow the underage Packers on any social media we'll talk to you later go pack go